welcome to Limitless Church. Welcome to our online service. We are super happy that you could join us today. And hey, if you're new, if you're new to this church experience, we would love to know a little bit about you. So um, hit us up on social media, send us an email, put in the comments on YouTube. But hey, let us know. Let us know if you want us to pray for you. We love to pray for people. All right, we might not look like the, the kind of church who loves to pray, but yeah, trust me, we love to pray for you. But right now, yeah, yeah, affirmation. But right now, um, right now it's time for the word. It's time for a brand new sermon series. We're starting a brand new sermon series today, and I'm calling it The School of Faith. The School of Faith. How cool is that title? Yeah, I'm taking you back to school, okay? I'm taking you back to school because I honestly believe it's, uh, it's time to go back to some core truths, some, some really core foundations, some, uh, especially this powerful topic called faith because um, sometimes we tend to forget, right? We tend to forget where we started. When we, are, when we are surrounded by circumstances in life, when we are surrounded by situations in life that bring so much fear to our hearts, when we are, when we are bombarded by bad news from the media, uh, we tend to forget who we are, right? We tend to forget whose we are. Yeah. But more importantly, we tend to forget how we started. Because we all started with faith. Right? All of this started with faith. The Bible says you're saved by grace through faith. We started with faith. So I believe it's time to go back to that, um, to that number one spot, to square number one. So I'm taking you back to faith. I'm taking you back to school and I'm teaching you faith all over again. But maybe for some of you, I'm teaching you faith for the very first time. Because, hey, you might be someone who's been a Christian all your life, or you might be someone who uh, is a brand new Christian, or you might be someone who does not believe in Jesus like everyone else believes in Jesus. It does not matter, okay? It does not matter because we are all in this class together. We're all students in the same class in the school of faith. Yeah, and so today is week number one of the school of faith, so today is lesson number one. All right? But before I tell you what lesson number one is, I want, you, uh, I want to ask you a question. In fact, I want, uh, I want you to do something for me. Will you do something for me if I ask you? Yeah, yeah. yeah? All right. Um, close your eyes. Go ahead, everyone. Close your eyes. Go ahead. Trust me. I'm a pastor. I won't, like, steal something. Close your eyes. Okay, cool. Now open your eyes. Open your eyes, everyone. And look around. Take a good look around. Turn around, look around. And tell me what do you see around you? Yeah, what else? Shout out some of the things that you can see. Mass, people, instruments. You see a very handsome guy on stage holding a mic. Incredibly handsome. Yeah, you, yeah okay, cool. Um, but let me ask you this question now. Let me ask you this question. How do you see all these things? Like, what, what gives you the ability to see everything around you? Eyes, right? Eyes. But what if I told you you're wrong? What if I told you you don't see through your eyes? What if I told you you see through your belief system? What if I told you, you don't actually see things, you actually believe things. You don't see things in life, you believe things in life. All right, you're, you're looking at me as if, you know, something really, um, let, me, let me try to prove this to you, okay? Um, let me show you something. What is this? Masks, Masks right? Masks, this is a face mask. But how do you know this is a mask? Like, did you, did you invent the mask? No. Did you uh, create the mask? No. Now, how do you know it's a mask? Because someone told you this is a mask. Yeah. And you believed it, right? 
right? Maybe for the first time, your friend might have told you, this is a mask, you have to wear it now. Or maybe people in your office told you, guys, we have to wear masks now. You know, that the first guy who's always, you know, woke. Um, or maybe your boss, maybe your boss told you, right? Or someone on social media, someone in the news came one day and said, guys, this is a mask, you have to wear it now. This is the new normal, right? Right? Someone came and said, Mitro, this is a mask, right? <laughs> because think about it now. If these were pre-COVID days, okay? Imagine now, these, this was before COVID. The awesome days, the wonderful days, the crowds, the hugging, you know, the kissing, and it gets a little overboard then. But imagine those days, right? Those days, pre-COVID days. If this was pre-COVID times and you came here to church, you were sitting down there. I came up on stage and I pulled this out from my pocket. I held it in my hand and I asked you, what is this? Most of you would not know what this is, right? Most of you would be looking at this and saying like, oh, it's, it's a piece of cloth with an elastic around, right? Maybe some of you would think this is an underwear, right? right? You would go home and say, pastor showed his underwear in church, right? But, but think about this now. Now, after COVID, you know this is a mask, Right? Now you know, now every single person in this room, every single person watching online, every person knows this is a mask because someone told you this is a mask and you believed it. You call this piece of cloth a mask because someone told you this is a mask and you believed it. You don't call this a mask because you see it's a mask. You call this a mask because you believe it's a mask. Right? You call this bottle of water a bottle of water not because you see it's a bottle of water, because you believe it's a bottle of water. You call the chair you're sitting on a chair not because you see it's a chair, but because you believe it's a chair. Everything that you see around you, you don't see those things. You actually believe those things. We don't see things in life. We believe things in life. In fact, not just me saying this, this is what the Bible says, right? The Bible says, for we live by believing and not by seeing, right? We live by believing. We human beings are believing beings. We are created with a desire to believe. We are created with a, uh, with a, with a craving to believe. We are created with this need to believe. Right? And we, we start believing from a very young age. From the time you're a, a very small baby, you start believing. In fact, the first thing you believe is when your mom, when you're a small baby, your mom points out to herself and says, I am your mama. Right? And then you see and you, you're like, okay, okay, yeah, this, this person, this human being with long hair who gives me everything that I need in life, she is my mama. And you believe it. Right? And then this other human being, which is not pretty useful to you at this moment, doesn't do much for you. Uh, he, mama shouts at him all the time, right? This other human being points out to himself and says, I am your dada. And you're like, okay, this useless human being is called dada, right? And then your mom points out to the most precious thing to you in the world, the thing that is so important to you in the world. And she says, this is doo-doo, right? And you believe this is doo-doo. The first three things that you believe in life, mama, dada, and doo-doo, yeah. right? That's how you start. And then you keep on believing things. As you grow up, people in your life point out to different things and they tell you what that is and you believe them. You believe. As you're growing, you're believing. And you know what you're doing in all your growing up years? You're forming this thing called a belief system. Everyone has a belief system. Everyone in this room, everyone watching online, every single human being on the planet has a belief system. You're here in church today with a belief system. If you're a Christian, then you have a belief system that says Jesus Christ is Lord, right? If you're an atheist, you have a belief system that says God does not exist, right? If you're a vegan, you have a belief system that says animals should not be eaten, right? If you're not a vegan, you have a belief system that says vegans suck, right? no, I'm not saying vegans suck. I'm just talking about belief systems, right? If you have an iPhone, you have a belief system that says Android sucks, 
right? Which is probably true, okay? That's probably one belief system you should have. If you have an Android phone, you have a belief system that says, iPhones are amazing, right? Come on, admit it. Sunil, admit it. But what's, you, you know my point, right? Do I have to give you more examples? If you're from Panjim, you have a belief system that says Margao sucks, but no. Um, every human being has a belief system, right? You have a belief system, and I feel your belief system is one of the most powerful things that you have. Every human being has a belief system, but, but the problem is not everyone uses their belief system system. Not everyone puts their belief system into practice. And putting your belief system into practice is called faith. That's faith. If you ask me to define faith, I would say faith in the most simplest of terms is putting your belief system into practice. That's faith. Faith in God is putting your belief system in God into practice. Right? Because it's not enough just to believe in God. I mean, you might be here and you might, you might believe that God is real, right? You might believe that, yeah, God is here or God is somewhere, somewhere around us. You might believe that God is powerful. You might believe that God is supreme. You might believe that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything we can ask or think. And all of that is great, congratulations. But if you don't do anything with your belief in God, that belief in God is Absolutely useless. Absolutely useless. Bible says this. Check this out. The Bible says, you believe there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Ouch. Someone say ouch. You have a belief system which is the same as demons, by the way. Right? That's crazy. You, you have a belief system of, of demons. We have the same belief system. It's crazy. I'm almost thinking of telling you to turn around and tell your neighbor, hey, demon. But I'll not say that. I'll not do that. I have too much controversy going on right now. But um, the only way, the only way to be better than a demon is to actually put, put your belief in God into action, into practice. And that is faith. And today I want to teach you faith. I want to teach you faith in the most simple of ways. So I'm going to take you back to school, your lesson number one in faith. So I'm going to take you to the Bible, to a story in the Bible, which I so love. In fact, I'm going to take you to the same story from last week. Ash preached such a powerful sermon last week, right? I loved it so much. Yeah, yeah, clap for her. Great job. I loved it so much that I, tried, uh, that I decided, you know what, let me copy her story. I won't copy your sermon, don't worry, but I'll copy your story. But I'm going to tell your story uh, from a different gospel, all right? Otherwise, she'll say, yeah, he copied everything, right? I'm the best, but he copied everything. Like, he's trying to, you know, like Ash says in one of her music videos, I am the greatest miracle, <laughs> right? You, you heard that? I am the greatest miracle. No, actually, she's just quoting me. I said that. Not about me, but about you. But anyways, uh, open your Bibles to Matthew 17. If you don't have your Bibles, absolutely fine, but don't make it a habit. Uh, we have words on the screen. Matthew 17, um, and I'm going to read from verse 14. You ready? Yes. All right. Another yes? yes. Okay, okay, good. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. And a man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. And then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy, and it left him. And from that moment, the boy was well. Afterward, and this is where I want to focus on, um, afterwards, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast that demon out? And this is Jesus' response. Check this out. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. You don't have enough faith. I 
tell you the truth. Listen to the truth now. I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small, say small. small. Say that one more time, please. Small. Even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Nothing would be impossible. Such a powerful story, right? Such an amazing story, such a famous story. Um, maybe you know the story, but I want to put this story into perspective. I believe the best way to, to learn the Bible, to know the Bible, is to put the story into perspective. And the best way to put a story into perspective is to put yourself in the story. So uh, try to put yourself in the story now. Enter the Bible, enter the story, and imagine you're one of Jesus' disciples, right? Uh, pick one disciple or create a new one, okay? Say your, your disciples here, all right? And you're, not, you're someone new in the disciple team. So say you're one of uh, Jesus' disciples. You're in this moment. There's a crowd of sick people in front of you, right? And Jesus is missing. Jesus is not there. He's gone up a mountain, because he does these kind of things, right? He suddenly disappears, and, and you're looking for him. You're like, man, there's a crowd of sick people. They all come for healing. Where is Jesus? You're asking the other disciples, guys, have you, do you know when he's coming? Did he tell you? And they're like, no, no, I don't know. Right? You're trying to call Jesus. Every time you call, you get that irritating COVID uh, call tune, right? Aaj pura desh, COVID-19, right? And, and, and you're like, you're, you're so tense. You're, you're in that moment. And while, while you're, you're, you're looking for Jesus with a crowd of people in front of you, this man gets a boy, his son, a young boy who is possessed with a demon inside of him, right? He has a demon. And this boy is like shaking, um, he's foaming at his mouth, right? He's getting fits, you know, a demon-possessed boy, right? Have you, have you seen any, any demon-possessed person? Yes, yes, some of you. Others, you've watched a horror movie, right? Come on, come on now, eh? right? This is like the possession of Hannah Grace, right? Have you watched that movie? No way am I endorsing this movie, okay? I'm just asking if you watched it. <laughs> Um, people, yeah, but this is the same. This is like a, a scene from a horror movie, except for Hannah Grace is a boy, right? And th there's this guy, there's this boy, demon-possessed boy in front of you, and his father is expecting you to heal him. And you're, you're like, me? You, you want me to, to heal this boy? He has a demon, right? He has a demon. This is not like he has a headache uh, or, or a fever or something, right? In fact, today, seeing a person with a fever is the same thing as seeing a person with a demon, right? I mean, have you seen the way we jump when the temperature gun goes red, right? It's crazy. This is the new normal. Uh, I, I was in the gym once. Um, this is uh, way back, okay? This is like um, just when the gyms open after lockdown. You remember that time? Everyone wanted to was in fitness and all of that. So I joined the gym and, uh, you know, there, was these, there were these big bodybuilders, huge guys with big muscles, right? Lifting huge weights and, and making that mean face, right? And making those sounds uh, uh, with, every, with every push spitting on you. But you're like COVID and they don't care, right? And, and they were there, and there was a skinny girl, a skinny girl trying to enter the gym. And the guy taking his temperature, he jumped because the, the temperature gun turned red. And you should have seen the way these big bodybuilders with big muscles started running like teenage girls, running away from a skinny little girl, right? This is the new normal. Welcome to the new normal. But the way we respond to life today, right? The, 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 the way we live our lives, the way we talk about our lives, the way we, um, the way we talk about life on social media, right? In, 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 uh, in the name of awareness, right? The things we put up and the, 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 the mindsets we have on social media, the way we respond to life is not really the way God wants us to live. Right? Think about it now. The way we respond to situations in life is not really the way God wants us to live. There's a difference. In fact, there's a big difference. Big, big difference. And one of the, the bigger differences is that we live life very normal. Right? We love normal. We love. We, today we are obsessed 
with normal, right? We crave for normal. Everyone is obsessed with normal. The, the number one thing in the world, the number one question that everyone is asking is, will the world go back to normal? Or is this a new normal, right? We are suckers for normal. We love, we're waiting for normal today. Another thing that we, we absolutely love is to settle down, right? Have you heard the term settle down? Of course you have. Your parents have been saying that to you all your life, right? Settle down, right? Your uncle, your aunties have been saying this all your life. Settle down. Come to the Gulf. Come to the UK and settle down, right? Your, your, your neighbors have been, have been saying this to you all the time. When are you going to settle down? Your brother is married now and he's settled down. When are you going to settle down, right? What happened? Someone settled down? He's settling down, somebody? Settle down, settle down. But we love to settle down, right? We love normal. We love these things. This is what we live for, to settle down and to be normal, right? This is our target today. This is our ambition today. We used to be the people who wanted to land on the moon. Right? We used to be the kind of people who wanted to conquer the world. We used to be the people who wanted to change the world. And now, all that we want is to settle down. We just want normal. Right? We want normal. This is human beings. This is the human generation of today. The most advanced race in humanity, in, in, in creation. And we want to settle down. We just want normal. And the reason I feel that we want normal is because of how we think about ourselves. Yeah. We want normal because we think we are just normal, average human beings. Yeah. Right? We think we're just normal. I mean, um, think about this now. You, 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 read about, you read about a great entrepreneur, a great business guy, uh, say Elon Musk, right? Sunil loves Elon Musk. Uh, and, and, you, uh, and you read about Elon Musk on social media, and you're like, wow, what a guy, man, what a guy. Such a cool guy, such an amazing business guy, right? You share about him on social media, his posts. You talk about him. You name your kids after him, right? One kid, Elon, another kid, Musk, right? You do all of that. But it never inspires you to start your own business. Why? Because you're thinking to yourself, I am just normal. I am not a business guy. I am not Elon Musk, right? You know how much risk he takes? I can't take those risks. I am just normal. You hear a new song, right? A new song comes out and you're like, wow, man, what a song, what a song, right? And, and you're like, yeah, you, you, you share that song on social media, you listen to that song on repeat, right? You take your guitar and you do a cover of that song, right? And you're like, man, but it never inspires you to write your own song. Because you're thinking in your mind, hey, I am not an artist. I'm just a normal human being. I'm just normal, right? You, 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 know how much, you know how much time it takes? You know how much talent it takes? You know how much money it takes? You know how much equipment it takes to, to write a song? I don't have all of that. I'm just normal. I'm just happy doing covers, right? And we are doing covers now. We are, we are the cover generation, by the way, right? I've never heard this term cover. You can ask my friends from uh, 2003, have you ever heard the term cover before? No. Now everyone is doing covers, right? We're happy doing covers. We're, we're taking the, you're doing cover, I'm also doing cover of the same song. We're, we're, we're cover buddies now, right? We're cover buddies. We used to be ch chaddi buddies, now we're cover buddies, right? We, we love to do covers. Let me, let me tell you the truth, okay? There's nothing more irritating than listening to a cover. It is irritating, guys. Please, like, it is so, if you give me a choice, I'll ra rather listen to an original song, right? Why would I listen to you trying to sing like uh, Justin Bieber, right? Like covers, I mean, and look, if you like doing covers, uh, please, no offense, okay? I don't mean to offend you. If, you. if you did a cover last week, ouch, like, that was not my intention. I'm not picking on anybody. What I'm trying to say is, don't stop doing covers, but don't let that stop you from doing something of your own, right? Because here's the thing, if you're good enough to do a cover, you're good enough to write your own song. Come on now, I, I, hope, this, I hope this lights a fire under somebody today, right? I hope this does something like pokes a pin 
Because, um, yeah, I'm, I, you, you get my frustration. I hate covers. I, man, there's things that I hate in life. Covers, Android phones, and mangoes. Right? These top three things. Cats, yeah, cats. Maybe the gym also. Maybe tall people, but no, I'm just kidding, just kidding. But well, what's my point? I forgot my point. Well, uh, forget my point. Let me tell you what the problem is, okay? This is the problem. The problem is that we think that great things require great faith. That's the problem. That's the problem. We think great things require great faith. Because faith is a concept in our mind and we have this weird concept, we have this idea of faith as this power thing, as this powerful thing, right? This super power that only a few people possess. And we call these people men of faith. We call these people women of faith, right? But let me tell you a secret. Listen up now. This is a secret, okay? Secret. Let me tell you a secret. Faith is not a superpower. Faith is a simple principle. That's the secret. Faith is not a superpower. Faith is a simple principle. Great things don't require great faith. Great things require only small faith, as small as a mustard seed. Jesus says this. Let me take you to, this, to the, the, the main scripture of today. Jesus says this. I tell you the truth, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Moving a great mountain does not require great faith. Moving a great mountain only requires small faith, as small as a mustard seed, as small as this. Can you see it? Come on, strain your eyes. Can you see it? It's so small that you sitting in this room cannot see. It's this small. It looks like something I pulled out from my nose, but it's that it's so small, but this is all that you need. This much of faith is all that you need to move mountains in your life, says Jesus. Let me put this back in my nose. But let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you have mountains in your life? Do you have mountains that need to move? out of your life? Do you have mountains that are blocking your life? Do you have mountains that are blocking your success in life? Do you have mountains that are blocking your finances? Do you have mountains that are blocking your future, that are blocking your progress, that are blocking, blocking your purpose in life, that are blocking your promotion, blocking your health? Do you have mountains? In fact, let me ask you to do this. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the word. In the meanwhile, let me quickly explain to you how you can give to support our church and ministry. We've made it easy for you to give today. You can give via Google Pay or via bank transfer. The details of that are on your screen. We also want to say thank you for continuing to support us with your prayers and with your giving. But right now, let's get back to the word. Think about just one mountain right now that you have in your life. Like this big mountain that is blocking everything in your life. Think about that one mountain. Just one. Let's keep it simple today. Just one. Got it? You have it? Keep it in your mind. In fact, write it down. Go ahead. Write it down. Or put it on your phone. All right? If you have an iPhone, it's very easy. There is notes. So you can... Android phones, you might get a little lost to make notes. But Sunil is struggling. Sunil is with his Android phone. Write it down, write it down. My mountain is this. Write it down. Tell you why I'm telling you to write it down. Write it down. My mountain is... My mountain is... Lack of volunteers at Limitless Church. That's my mountain. Now I told you, now you sign up for volunteers. No, just kidding. 
No, not kidding. Actually, that's my mountain, but kidding about sign up now. Have you all written? My mountain is? All right. The reason why I asked you to write that down is because I am going to teach you today. I'm going to teach you in the next five minutes how to move that mountain out of your life. I'm going to teach you right now. That's your class. That's your class. You ready? We're going to move that mountain right now. And I'm going to teach you in the most simplest of ways. Let me put that scripture back up again. Matthew 17, 20. Maybe write the scripture down as well. This is important. Jesus says, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed. As small as a mustard seed. What's the key here? Jesus talks about faith in terms of two things, right? In terms of quantity and quality. In terms of quantity, Jesus says you only need small faith. Right? Only small faith. And sometimes we, we take that and it's an incomplete scripture because we take, oh, I only need small faith and we do dumb things. It doesn't work. Right? But Jesus also talks about faith in terms of quality. And he says faith is like a mustard seed. He, Jesus compares faith to a seed, to a seed. And if you're someone who reads the Bible, then you probably know this, that most of the things in the kingdom of God happen and work as a seed, right? Things in God's kingdom don't happen with, with like a, a snap of a finger. Things don't happen with a, uh, with a moving of a magic wand, right? Or things don't happen like boom, shabba, haba, haba, boom, and you fall down and, you, and, you, and your life has changed. It does not work that way. That is not how Jesus teaches us in the Bible. He says, faith is like a seed. Everything in the Bible, everything in the kingdom of heaven works like a seed and even faith. So here's the thing. If faith is like a seed, then faith also works like a seed works. Right? How does a seed work? How does a seed work? What's the first thing you need to do to make a seed work? We have a landscape artist here. We have a guy who's, who believes, his belief system is um, uh, hu uh, humans should not exist, only trees should exist. Right? We have this amazing guy. He's trying to hide his face below the mask. But how do you make a seed work? What's the first thing that you need to do? You need to plant it, right? You need to plant it. You can't keep a seed in your hand or in the pocket. You might have the best seeds in the world, the most expensive seeds in the world, but if you keep them in your pocket, nothing will happen. It won't work, right? A seed only works after it is planted. After it is planted. So if faith is like a seed, then faith also works only after it is planted. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to plant your Faith. Step number one, out of just two steps, okay? This is just the first one, and I have just one more. Step number one, plant your faith. Plant your faith. You might have great faith in your head. You might have great faith on your phone. You might have great faith um, uh, online. You might have great faith posted online on social media. It is useless if you've not planted it. Don't post your faith. Plant your faith. Plant your faith. Step number one. What do I mean by plant your faith? How do you plant it? You take a seed. Let me take the small thing. You take a seed and you, you put it down in the soil, right? Where's the seed? Not in your hand. It's in the soil. Right? The same way. When you're planting your faith, when you're Planting your faith, you don't keep it in your hand, you release it to God, yeah. right? Planting your faith is making a prayer of faith to God. Make a prayer of faith to God. And take that prayer, don't keep it with you, don't keep that prayer with you and pray that prayer every time. Just pray that prayer once. Take that prayer and just put it in the ground, give it to God, surrender it to God. That's how you do it. Make a prayer of faith to God. The Bible says this, 
Do not be anxious about anything. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Plant your faith. Make a prayer of faith to God. You wrote about that mountain in your book, right? You have a mountain written down. Go home today and uh, tell God about that mountain. Give God that mountain. Tell God about that mountain. Before, before you talk to your mountain, before you tell your mountain, you have to tell God about your mountain. And, and this is where some of us get it wrong. I heard so many preachers say, don't talk to God about your mountain, talk to the mountain about your God, right? I heard this and it never works. This is the wrong order. In fact, this is what the disciples did. They went to the mountain and they started talking to the mountain, right? They started casting that demon. And Jesus, it never worked. Jesus told us the problem. He says, guys, you don't have faith. And if faith is like a seed, it means they did not plant their faith first. First thing, surrender your faith to God. Make a prayer of faith to God. Right? That's step number one. What's step number two? with a seed. After you planted your seed, what do you do? Water it, right? Water it. You need to water it. But here's the key. Here's the key. You need to water it every day. And that is where we miss it. That's where it does not work. Because some of us are great in making prayers of faith, right? We have the voice. We have the voice. Oh, thou Lord, thy God, right? We, we, we have the voice. We have the right words. We know. We have the language. And we make that prayer, but we don't water it. Or maybe you water it once or twice, but you don't water it every day. That's the key. You need to water that faith every day. You plant your seed just once, but you water that seed every day. Just like that. You make a prayer of faith just once, but you declare your faith every day. Every day. Make a declaration of faith every day. Declarations have to be part of your life. That's one of the most fundamental truths, one of the fundamental things uh, you do as a Christian. Declare your faith. If you prayed about your job, you prayed about your job just once, okay? Don't keep on sowing the same seed again and again. It will die. You will kill your faith. Just like you, imagine I sow that seed and I dig it up, and I sow it again and I dig it up. You're going to kill that seed, right? Yeah. Right? Doctor of plants, yes? Yes, he's nodding at the back, right? In the same way, you're going to kill your faith if you keep on praying the same thing and digging it up again and again. Pray just once, but declare your faith every day. You prayed about your job? Every day, declare about your job. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting a new job. Every day. Keep on declaring. You prayed about a healing? Declare, I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. Right? Simple things, but keep on declaring every day. Let me tell you how I do it, okay? Let me tell you my secret. This is the pastor's secret, all right? And it is the most weird thing in the world, but it works for me like magic, all right? You know when I make my declarations and how I remember to make my declarations? Every time I drink water, I declare my faith. Every time. So with every sip of water, thank you, Jesus, limitless is changing lives. Another sip. Thank you, Jesus. My daughter is growing up with wisdom and knowledge. With every sip of water, I declare my faith. Everything that I've prayed for, I'm just making my declarations. And it helps me remember, and in my mind, I'm watering that seed. I'm watering that seed. You can do that as well. You can copy my, my trick, like I copied Ash's uh, story from the Bible. But hey, if you want to do something else, do it. But hey, declare your faith every day. You have to do that. Two simple steps, two simple steps. Um, plant your faith, declare your faith. Sorry, plant your faith, water your faith, but water it every day. Plant your faith, water your faith, and water it every day, every day. And if you don't stop watering, if you don't stop watering your seed, I can guarantee you that seed will grow. Yeah. It will grow. Not just me saying this is God's promise. Don't take my word. Take, take the word of the Lord. This is what God says. That seed will grow well. 
the vine will yield its fruit. The ground will produce its crop and the heavens will drop their dew. It is going to work. If you don't stop praying, if you don't stop watering that faith, if you don't stop watering that seed, that seed will grow. That faith will grow. That promise will come to pass. That mountain will move from your life. That breakthrough will come. It is a guarantee. The key is don't stop watering. Don't stop declaring your faith. Hey, it's not about the size of your faith. It's about where you put your faith in. If you're putting it in the heart of God, it will grow, says the Lord. It will grow. That's it. Two simple steps. This is your class. This is your lesson number one. Two simple steps. Plant your faith. Water your faith every day. That's it. That's the end of the class. Ting, ting, ting. Close your eyes. Bow your heads.